Saint Francis Xavier. The Catholic Church at the crossroads. The way to the nations. At the turn of the 20th century, the British intensified their presence in Kenya and formally declaring it a British colonial protectorate. Alongside their colonial activities, many missionaries arrived from various parts of Europe to evangelize the young nation, and as such, Christianity rapidly increased, creating a demand for places of worship. In Nairobi, just like in other places, churches were scarce, and the growing needs of the Christian population, both Africans and Goans, were not being met sufficiently. In Parklands, Dr. Rosendo Ayres Ribeiro, a famous Goan private medical practitioner known for paying visits on a zebra which was more disease resistant than the traditional horses, decided to take up the honors of building a church, which today is known as St. Francis Xavier, situated at the junction of Parklands and Limuru Road. Built in 1933 and funded largely by the Goan community for their own use, the church is uniquely set on a neo-Gothic architectural design style with walls that are made of stone, but rest at regular intervals beneath a mangalow-style roof featuring a high-vaulted ceiling. Windows are glazed in steel casements supported in arc openings with rose windows at the higher elevations. The walls are rustic and the external elevations give the visual impression of an impenetrable fortress. The statue of our patron saint, Saint Francis Xavier, still stands tall as before among the many other statues of Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse, and others. The church today is open to people of all races. As on the festival of Saint Francis Xavier, you bid your church to rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Saint Francis Xavier, the patron saint of missionaries, and one of the founders of the Jesuit order was born on 7th of April 1506 in Navarre in present-day Spain. He was part of a noble family and his childhood was one of privilege. However, it was interrupted by the death of his father and attempts by the outside forces to take control of Navarre. In 1525, Xavier went to study at the University of Paris where he encountered Ignatius of Loyola who had experienced a conversion while recovering from a war wound. Ignatius implored Xavier to join him on the same path of devotion. On 15th of August 1534, Xavier, Ignatius and five others pledged themselves to the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits. Xavier became a priest on the 24th of June 1537. They then went to Rome and put themselves in the hands of the Pope. When the Pope asked for men for the conversion of the Indies, the choice fell on Xavier. Go, set the world on fire with God's love. Saint Ignatius said to him, Xavier sailed off into the unknown east from Lisbon, Portugal on 7th of April 1541 on his 35th birthday. The voyage was terrible and sickness ravaged the passengers and the crew. Xavier gave himself heroically in caring for the sick. It took them five months to reach Mozambique on the African coast. They also touched Malinde in Kenya, where to this day her heart where St. Francis Xavier celebrated Mass is preserved. Leaving Africa, 
they reached Goa, India on 16th of May 1542, more than a year since leaving Lisbon. Xavier devoted himself to caring for the sick, catechizing the children and preaching the gospel. He came to be admired in India for his ability to live and work side by side with the poor. Seeking more converts, Xavier continued to travel south to the fishery coast in Cochin. In 1545, he spent a long time in prayer and retreat at St. Thomas Shrine in Mylapur, where he understood that God was calling him still farther east. He travelled on to Ceylon, the Molucca Islands, the Banda Islands, the Mulay Peninsula, and finally reached Kagoshima, Japan on August 15, 1549. His next target was China, and landing on the island of Sanxian near Canton, he could not access the mainland as borders were closed to foreigners. Unfortunately, he succumbed to illness before he could find a way into the mainland and died. On that of December 1552, at the relatively young age of 46, his miraculously preserved body was shipped to Goa for burial in 1554, where it still resides. In a short span of 10 years, Saint Francis Xavier traveled to so many mission lands that he is considered second only to the great apostle Saint Paul in conversion of souls. He chose to evangelize the farthest part of the world and his spirit has lived on in many arts even here in Kenya as if recalling the words in the scripture in Matthew chapter 4 verse 12 to 16. Land of Zebulon and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Our hearts are filled with gratitude and joy that overflows us within, and we recall the path. St. Francis Xavier has traveled, spreading the fragrance of God's love, compassion, mercy, and joy to people in India, Africa, and other parts of the world. St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church has faced many challenges due to the various developments in the surrounding areas, especially the two flyovers flanking the church. Despite the challenges, the ever faithful Catholics attend the services inside and outside this historic church, including their family day celebrations. St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church is driven by a strong apostolic charisma found within its faithful. and the desire to reach out to the young populations in schools, where apart from the usual Eucharistic celebrations, they engage the students in continuous formation and catechesis in matters of faith, Christian values, and social integrity. So the message today, this morning to us, is that the Lord is present, is among us. It's a wholesome, inclusive ministry where the unique cases of children living with disabilities are also taken into consideration in the pastoral ministry. Give them strength, embody courage. In the city primary, 
the weekly activities are not any different from Dr. Ribeiro Parkland Primary School. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and love. Thanksgiving. It is very important to us who say that we are disciples of Jesus. St. Francis serves the Christian within its jurisdiction in a holistic and healing manner. From youth formations at the church premises to the picnics where youths discuss freely their challenges to common peer counseling, faith and growth have never been this better. The church is aware, literally, that the mission cannot be confined to only those who are physically and mentally well, but also to those who suffer in hospitals, in prisons, and in the many needy cases within their reach. The connectedness of all working together for the glory and the kingdom of God has always inspired St. Francis Xavier community to serve and not to be served. This connectedness is experienced yearly during the family day celebrations that bring together the pastoral team, the pastoral council, the clergy, the bishop, the small Christian communities and the parishioners in a day always filled with glamour as the various groups in the church like the Catholic Women and Men Association, Ministers of the Sikh, Apostolic and Development Committees, liturgical dancers, newlyweds join to celebrate the wonders of God in their own lives. When we come together, great things happen. Don't you agree? Yes. So we have to be together. And may St. Francis Xavier's life of sacrifice, devotion, to sharing the gospel remind us all of our own call to share the hope, peace, and love of Jesus with others. St. Francis Xavier, may he bless us from heaven. May he continue to help us in all our families' challenges because we are really honored him today. This is so beautiful that all of us were able to create time to come.